all and welcome. My name is Margaret. I'm a historical costumer and textile conservator in training. And today I have another video in the series about making my 1860s changeable dress. If you haven't seen the rest of the videos in the series, I will pop the link to the playlist up there and also down below so you can follow along if you haven't seen those videos. It's not a requirement to see them before you're viewing this one, but it will be a little helpful. Today we are doing the two bodices in this dress. Um, the first being the high collared sort of day bodice style and the second being the evening bodice style. Again, this project has sort of been held up just because I needed the fringe to come and it wasn't coming in the mail. It was not on the fault of the seller, it was on the fault of my address being really weird, which is just a curse that I live with. My name and my address just do not like computers and it's frustrating. Both of the patterns for these bodices came from um, Period, Costume for the Stage and Screen from Jean Hunnisett. Thankfully they were my size so I didn't have to do a lot of finagling with them, but you will sort of see the process that I went through to construct both of the bodices in this video. So without further ado, let's get into the sewing. So first thing I did was to cut out the bodices, um, both from the silk taffeta and then also from the glazed cotton lining. Both of these will be flat lined in the glazed cotton lining. Both of the bodices were drafted from Jean Hunnisett's book, as I mentioned in the introduction, and I got really lucky. There was only slight modifications to fit me. I did film some of the fitting process, which is on my TikTok, A Costume and Conservation, if you're interested in that. I don't tend to film these for YouTube just because I'm not particularly good at it and don't feel that my input on it is necessarily something that people need to watch. And um, I, I get very frustrated, but if you do want to see me be confusing about fitting, then you can of course go over to my TikTok. So after th everything was cut out, I put aside the evening bodice and started constructing the day bodice. I assembled the main body pieces. I used lap seams for the back, as this would normally be a false seam, and I didn't want it to obviously be curved. So I just, you know, used a lap seam so it stayed flat, and I hand stitched the side seams to be extra. Alrighty, so... The main construction on the bodice, this day bodice, is done. Obviously, it doesn't have the buttons on it, it doesn't have the sleeves on it yet, it doesn't have the finishing work done on it yet, but it's at a point where I need to try it on and that is going to happen after work tomorrow, so get excited. However, the evening bodice is still very much in pieces at this point. Um, and I think it's going to stay that way until the day bodice is done. Additionally, the trim that I ordered, the f silk fringe for this project, is not going to come until probably the start of July. So I do have a little bit of time to finish all of this before I really need to start getting going on other things. Um, deadline for this project is now the beginning of August, so I think that's very doable and hopefully I can get maybe another project done before August. I'm thinking maybe a Regency gown um, and then Madame de Pompadour after that. So get excited, it's happening. And then I filmed my back while I was assembling uh, the gold piping. The piping was made out of a gold silk satin that was cut on the bias and then a just kind of ratty cotton cord was put between two layers of that bias, folded, and a zipper foot was used to secure that. So, although my gold silk thread doesn't necessarily match my gold silk satin, it does. We're gonna, we're gonna focus on it. It does match my hair, which I think is pretty funny. So, so if you want to know the color of my hair, it is a uh, Kinkakami 114. Yay. Sleeves were next. I marked both the fashion fabric and the lining layers with chalk. Steamed these together my machine, evened up the lining and the fashion fabric, and pinned them onto the arm's eye. As always, I had to do some squidging with this sleeves, and um, this time it was that the arm's eye was actually too big for the sleeve, as an example of how I am not particularly good at altering or drafting patterns. It's something I'm working on 
So it wasn't a big enough mistake that I would have to recut the sleeve, so there is a little bit of puckering, which I will talk about in an upcoming clip. I then back stitched the seams into place. I find that securing sleeves by hand is just honestly less frustrating than securing them by machine because I tend to rip them out at least once when I secure them by machine. This was also done historically, so many machine sewn garments that you see in the late 19th and into the 20th century will still have hand done sleeves because let's be real, it's just easier. Then of course I finished off the center front. I just turned in the fashion fabric twice to give it a nice finish and then whipped it down to the lining. I added half inch boning to the darts. This is also something I saw on several extant examples. And to finish off the neck edge and the hem and also the sleeve cuffs, I pinned the piping onto the seam allowance and sewed close to the piping with a zipper foot. Then I flipped the piping out, trimmed the seam allowance, clipped the corners, and pinned a bias strip of the fashion fabric over the remaining seam allowance. I then whipped the bias strip into place to sort of finish off the edge. I will say this is a technique that I've seen on many extant garments from this period as well, including some of the bodices that I have in my collection. I believe if you watch the designing dress video, you will see this technique in action. So as you can see, I just have my corset on. I don't have my chemise on, but this is the bodice, totally constructed. I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously we've got some rumply bumplies happening in the arm side because the arm side was too big for the, well just, the arm side was just a little bit too big for the sleeves, but it wasn't enough to redo it. And then there's a little bit of rumpling here but you know it's okay because I'll be moving around and there'll also be the fringe right here covering that up so I'm not super super concerned about it but I think the fit overall is pretty good um, it hits perfectly at the waist um, and yeah I've just marked where I want my buttonholes to go so yeah here it is right now i'm excited it's going now it was time for buttons i originally wanted to use these antique crochet buttons but they were just not quite the right color so i ended up going with some buttons that i uh, ordered later on but i did do hand done buttonholes for this so i snipped open slits for the buttons and whipped around the slits to form these these buttonholes. Although buttonholes were done by machine in the period, modern machine sound buttonholes just don't quite have the same feel and I just opted to do mine by hand. And I did end up using these metal gold shank buttons that I mentioned earlier and just stitched those on. And then I set aside the day bodice and started working on the evening bodice. So I'm sort of at a weird point with the day bodice now. I'm waiting on the fringe to come in and I ordered some more buttons too for it because nothing I had was really working for me. So I guess we're gonna move on to the evening bodice now. It's basically just sewing all of these pieces together and then adding the trimmings essentially. So let's do that. First I did a normal seam on the back curves and um, that was not correct. <laughs> you know when you just start things and then immediately do it wrong. That's where we're at right now. <laughs> so I did a lapped seam on the back instead, just as I did on the day bodice. Just did all the rest up with plain seams. And then I ironed the seams thoroughly, which I always do, but I ended up filming it this time for some reason. I then finished off the center back like I did on the center front of the day bodice. So I've decided against doing the puppy sleeves because I think the silk taffeta is just going to be too bulky. So I've just taken sort of the inner sleeve pattern and I'm just going to cut that out of the silk taffeta and then just use that and have a little cap sleeve um, and trim it up really nicely. So that is the new plan. I am really glad I didn't go with the puffed sleeve here. I sort of mocked it up and it just 
it was this the taffeta is frankly too stiff so I'm glad I went with the cap sleeve. I think it's dainty, I think it's cute, and it is, in fact, historically accurate. And then, of course, I seamed up the lining of the sleeve and the silk and then lined them up. I finished off the bottom by just folding in the fashion fabric and the lining and then whipping the lining to the fashion fabric. I pinned the sleeves onto the bodice and sewed them on by hand, much as I did on the day bodice. However, this time, the arm side was, in fact, the right shape. I then drafted this Bertha-like collar off camera, cut it out of the fashion fabric and lining. I seamed up the front, making sure to match up the stripes, and secured the lining to the fashion fabric of the collar, much as I did with the ends of the sleeves, just with whip stitches through the lining and the seam allowance of the fashion fabric. Pinned the collar onto the bodice and finished it off with that same piping technique that I did with the day bodice. And finally, after weeks of waiting, I attached the fringe to both bodices and voila, we have an 1860s changeable gown. All right, so those are the two bodices. As you can see, I love this evening bodice. I think they both turned out really well, um, considering the amount of time I put into the mock-ups, which was not very much. Um, there are a few little issues. Um, for instance, this is sort of my Bertha in the front. This bit sort of like rides up, so it's supposed to be like yay, but it's sort of just... I'm just gonna let that go. That's fine. I think it looks fine. I don't think it's visually distracting to the garment at all. Um, it's also very difficult to do back lacing hooks by yourself in your apartment, which you've turned off the air conditioning because it makes noise. So if I'm a little sweaty right now, just pretend it's a glowy summer look because guess what? I am, I am sweaty right now. But I, oh, I feel like an absolute princess in this. There is also a little bit of a, a little wrinkle there, but. We're gonna let that go. We're gonna let that be. The only problem with the day bodice is the fact that the arm side is too big for the arms, the sleeves. So there's a little bit of rumply bumpliness up here in that bodice, which you can kind of see. But again, I'm gonna let that one go. Overall, I think it looks absolutely stunning. The color palette is a little Winnie the Pooh on camera, I will say. In real life, the red is a little bit more muted, so I don't look like everyone's favorite, um, you know, honey-eating bear with no pants. So the next thing to do in this project is to schnazz it up a little bit. So obviously I could wear it like this, like this is awesome, love it, love it. Um, but if you've seen my designing dress video, you know I have a bit more in store for this. So I'm gonna put a ruffle on the skirt and I'm also going to make a little waist belt, maybe two, I have a frack ton of this fabric left to give myself some little butt bows, use a little bit more of the trim because I ordered 25 yards of it and I needed like five 
I really overestimated on that, but you might be seeing this gold trim again. Get pumped. Um, and I'm also going to make a hat to go with the day bodice and maybe some type of uh, neck adornment for this one. I don't know what you guys think. Black velvet choker? Because I'm thinking black velvet choker. So that's the bodices. I hope you enjoyed watching me sew these. I hope you will tune in to the next video as well. I should be getting some semi-professional shots of this dress, which I'm very excited. Um, and if you would like to, you can follow me on my other socials. I'm at Instagram at Costume and Conservation, and I'm also on TikTok at Costume and Conservation. I have fun over on those two places as well. So do that if you would like. Don't do that if you would like to not do that. You can, of course, subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button on this video if you, in fact, liked this video. So I will see you in the next one, hopefully. But otherwise, have a fabulous day. Bye.